Hey, Tony the Triangle, tell, tell me one more time, tell me you about triangles and coordinate proofs. Big city, big apple, New York City, best city in the world, don't need proof of that. First thing we're going to talk about is a coordinate proof. That's a proof that uses figures in the coordinate plane in algebra to prove geometric concepts. So today we're going to be dealing with certain figures, certain geometric figures that are created on a set of axes, the X and the Y axes. Now, when we create these figures, there's going to be two different ways you're going to see this. It's either going to be giving you a set of parameters, a set of instructions on how to place the given geometric figure on our axes, or you're going to be given a figure on a set of axes with some coordinates missing and you're gonna have to fill those in now notice when we're dealing with coordinate proofs look at the coordinates they're not 8 comma 0 or 4 comma 10 those aren't these points instead these points are at 4b comma 0 2b comma 2c we're gonna be using algebra which means we're gonna be using variables in place of the given x and y coordinates so I'll show you more how this works when we get into our examples Hey, Taxi! Give me two example time! Coming up now! Now, example one says position and label right triangle MNP on the coordinate plane so that leg MP is A units long and leg NP is B units long. Then find the coordinates for each point. Let's first create a set of axes because we're going to put this triangle, this right triangle MNP on the coordinate plane. Next, it says on the coordinate plane, we're going to put this triangle. It's a right triangle and it's a right triangle so that leg MN is A units long and leg NP is B units long. Notice that both legs of this right triangle have the letter N in them. Because of that, that means N is going to be our right angle. It's going to be the point that we actually put at our origin, 0, 0. Now, why did we do that? Because the two legs are MN and NP. That would make MP the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So I'm going to put M here and P here. Now, what you could have done is put P here and M here. Either way this works. Then you know that these have to be the legs and this right here, segment MP or PM, has to be your hypotenuse, meaning that angle N is your right angle. Now I have created my triangle where it is a right triangle and segment MN and segment NP are the legs. The hypotenuse we just said is segment MP or PM. So now I need to label this. How long is leg MN? We look at the question, leg MN is A units long. So we say that right here has to be A units. Then it says leg NP is B units long. So we look at segment NP down here. We know that has to be B units long. Based on this label, we can then find the coordinates for each of these points, M, N, and P. So how do we find the coordinates for point M? Well, we look, M is on the y-axis. Because M is on the y-axis, it must have an x-coordinate of zero, right? Because all of these points are zero comma something. So this is over zero units on the x-axis, and it's up A units on the y-axis, which means this point would be zero comma A. For point N, it is at the origin, which means it has to have the coordinates 0, 0. Point P is over B units on the x-axis, which means it's going to be at B, comma, and then it's up or down 0 on the y-axis, so it's going to be B, comma, 0. That's going to be the coordinates for point P. Again, these two points, you could have actually switched. So if you put point P up here, it would have been at 0, comma, B. If you put point M down here, it would have been at A, comma, 0. Either way, that would have satisfied the parameters of this question. Hey, I got a pizza on the way. You try. Okay, we're doing the same thing here, except this time we have an isosceles triangle, and it's got a base of segment AB that is 2A units long, and then its height is B units. So, first thing I want to do is create the graph, which means I need a set of axes. Notice that I arranged my axes a little bit differently this time. The reason for that is we're not dealing with a right triangle anymore. We're dealing with an isosceles triangle, which means I want it to be congruent on both sides. I want both of these legs of my isosceles triangle to be congruent, so I'm going to have it stretched straddling the y-axis. Now, what can I glean from this question? Well, it says the base is segment AB. So if I want my base to be down here, I need one of these sides to have point A and the other side to have point B. That way, this segment AB is my base, which means up here, I'm going to have point C. That creates my isosceles triangle. 
Now, let's label what each of these lengths are. We know that the base is segment AB, and it is 2A units long, which means the distance from point A to point B has to be 2A units. The height of this triangle is B units. Notice that the distance from point C to our origin is actually the height of this isosceles triangle. So this distance right here is going to be B units. Now that we've correctly labeled this isosceles triangle, we can find the coordinates for points A, B, and C. Let's start with point A. Notice that this isosceles triangle is perfectly straddling the y-axis, which means the y-axis cuts it in half, which means that if segment AB is 2A units long, that means that this distance right here has to be A units, and this distance over here has to be A units. So if I was thinking about the coordinates for point A, since the origin is right here, these x-coordinates over here have to be negative. So if this distance is A, then this point would be at negative A, comma, zero. Point B, we just said the distance from our origin to point A is A units, and the distance from our origin to point B also has to be A units. Since these are the positive x values, we would say point B is at positive A, comma, zero. Again, it's zero for each of these because it's on the x-axis, which means its y-coordinate has to be zero. Point C is on the y-axis, which means its x-coordinate has to be 0. But what is its y-coordinate? Well, we know it goes up B units. Since it's B units up, we can say that C has to be at 0, comma, B. And you're done. Now, example 2 says name the missing coordinates of the triangle. So the only missing coordinates I see are for point H and point G. First thing I want to do if I'm naming these missing coordinates is I want to label this graph. So notice we are given both X and Y coordinates for point F. That's not an accident. That is trying to tell you what point H is over here. Since this is an isosceles triangle that is straddling the Y axis, just like we were dealing with, that means that both of the segments down here from F to our origin and from our origin to H, those have to be congruent to each other. So if point F is at negative 2A comma 0, that means this distance right here has to be 2A units. And since this is an isosceles triangle, we just said both of these segments then have to be congruent. So if this is 2A units, this over here must also be 2A units. Now, notice point G. It gives us the Y coordinate for point G. That again is not an accident. Because we are given the Y coordinate for point G, that lets us know how high up point G is on the Y axis, which means it lets us know the distance from the origin to point G. So that distance has to be B units. Now that we've correctly labeled the figure, we can find the coordinates of H and G, the ones missing coordinates. So let's start with point H. Point H is on the X axis and it's 2A units from the origin, which means the X coordinate for point H has to be 2A units because it's 2A units from the origin. We also know that's on the X axis, which means it's Y coordinate has to be zero. Similarly, since G is on the Y axis, its X coordinate must be zero. And since it already gives us the B value, we just write B and we have the coordinates for both points H and G. I don't think this thing has ever worked. You try. Okay, doing the same thing. We want to find the missing coordinates of this triangle. So that would be the coordinates for point A and point B. We are given the coordinates for point C. Now that is not an accident. So the first step in finding these missing coordinates is to label this graph. Based on the information we are given from point C, we know that the distance from point B to point C is going to be this x coordinate right here, 4a, because this is at 4a comma 0. That means the length of segment BC has to be 4a units. Now notice these little red tick marks. What do those mean? Those mean that this is an isosceles right triangle, meaning that we have a right triangle, and it's isosceles because it has two congruent sides, or legs in this case. These two legs are congruent, meaning that if this distance is 4a units, this distance over here from point A to B also has to be 4a units. We have now correctly labeled our graph so we can go over here and find the coordinates of points A, B, and C. Let's start with point A up here. It's on the y-axis, which means its x-coordinate has to be 0. Every point on the y-axis has an x-coordinate of 0. The only question is, what is the y-coordinate? How high up on the y-axis does it go? Well, this says it goes up 4A units. So point A would have to be at 0, 4A. Point B is at the origin. We know the origin is at 0, 0. Point C, we already know the coordinates for that, so we're done. Look at that, that was super easy. Part B, doing the exact same thing. So, first step is to label the graph. 
based on what we're given, we know that this is an isosceles triangle. We know that this length down here is going to be the X coordinate of point H. The distance from point F to point H has to be this value right here. It's 4A units. The height of this given triangle you get from the Y coordinate of point G because that tells you how high up point G is. And that would be 2B rad 3 units. So if we know the height of this triangle is 2B rad 3 units and the base of this triangle is 4A units, we can then go on to state the coordinates of points f g and h here so we start with point f point f is at the origin so that we know is zero comma zero point g we know is something comma 2b rad 3 so we already know the y coordinate we just need to know the x coordinate here well if this is an isosceles triangle remember if we were to drop an altitude down the middle right here that's going to be halfway between f and h so because point G is halfway between points F and H, that means that it would be half of whatever the distance from point F to point H is. So what's half of that distance? That would be 2A. And that makes sense, right? If you have an isosceles triangle right here, if you go from point F to wherever the G coordinate is on the X axis, that's halfway between point F and point H. So that would be 2A units. So if the whole thing is 4A units, that must be 2A units. We already know that the Y coordinate is 2B rad 3 units, so we can label that. And then last but not least, point H, we know is that 4A comma what? Well, it's on the X axis, so we know it has to be 4A comma 0. Now example three, this is name the missing coordinates of the triangle again. First step in doing this, you want to label the graph. So how do we label this graph? Well, you're given point K. And again, that's not an accident. The reason you're given point K is so that you know the length of segment MK right here has to be 2A units. You also see these little red tick marks. What do those mean? Those mean that all the sides of our triangle here must be congruent. So if MK is 2A units, KL must also be 2A units. And LM must also be 2A units. So we have each side of the triangle. The only thing we don't have is the height of the triangle. Well, how do I figure out this height? Well, think about what we did when we knew it was an isosceles triangle. Here it's an equilateral triangle, but for us, we can treat it like an isosceles triangle because both of these legs right here are congruent, which means when I drop this height right down the middle, it's actually going to bisect our base. It's going to cut it right in half. So because our base has been cut in half, if we know our base is 2A units, then each of these segments that we've created are going to be A units long. Why does that help us? Well, look at what we've done. We've created a right triangle here. So if we want to figure out the height of this triangle, it's just like figuring out the length of one of the missing legs of a right triangle. And how do you do that? The Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, it's going to be our leg squared plus our leg squared is equal to our hypotenuse squared. So a squared plus our height squared is equal to our hypotenuse squared, which is 2a squared. Now we can simplify this and solve for our height. So how do we do that? Well, if I square a, it's just a squared. If I square 2a, you have to square the 2 and the a, so you end up getting 4a squared. Now to solve for the height, I get the height by itself, so I subtract a squared from both sides, and I get the height squared is equal to 3a squared. So to get the height by itself now, I get rid of this squared by square rooting both sides. The square and the square root cancel each other out. And over here, the square root of 3a, I actually have to simplify. To simplify this, I break this up so 3 has its own radical and the a squared has its own radical. Why do I do that? Because rad 3, that stays under the radical. But the square root of a squared, the square and the square root cancel each other out. And you're just left with a. So the height is going to be equal to a rad 3 units. So if I know the height of this triangle, triangle is a rad 3 units, I can then find the missing coordinates of our points. So M and L are the only ones missing coordinates, so let's just do those. Here, point M is at the origin. That's 0, 0. That was easy. L is the only hard one to find. The X coordinate for point L, we said it goes over A units. So since it's A units over on the X axis, that means its X coordinate must be A. The height, the distance from the X axis to our point L up here has to be A rad 3 units. We solved for that. So point L is at A comma A rad 3. And we found the missing coordinates of our two points. Hey, you're good. Try it already. You try it. Okay, doing the same thing here. So first, we want to label this graph. It only gives us the coordinates for point C. That's not an accident. Because we know that C is at 4B, 0, we know that the distance over on the x-axis that point C is, is 4B, which means the distance from point A, our origin, to point C, 
has to be 4B units. Because this is an equilateral triangle, if this side is 4B units, this side and this side must both also be 4B units because all three sides must be congruent. The only thing left to figure out is what is the height of this triangle? Well, again, to figure out the height, we need to use the Pythagorean theorem. And how do we use the Pythagorean theorem? There can only be one missing side length. So that has to be our height because that's what we're trying to find. So what is this side length right here? Well, if the whole thing is 4B units and this is an equilateral triangle, we know that when you drop an altitude or you drop the height of the triangle down the middle, it's going to bisect this base right here. So if this base is 4B units, then each of these segments become 2B units in length which means the measure of this leg is 2B units. The measure of our height, we don't know, but the measure of the hypotenuse, we now know is 4B units. So if we want to figure out the height of our triangle right here, all we have to do is use the Pythagorean theorem. And we say the leg squared plus the leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So 2B squared plus our height squared has to equal 4B squared. Now 2B squared, you square the 2 and you square the B, you get 4B squared. Over here, 4B squared, the quantity, you have to square the 4 and the B, so you get 16B squared. Again, we're solving for the height, so we want to get that by itself. We subtract 4B squared from both sides. 16B squared minus 4B squared is going to give you 12B squared. We then get the height all by itself by getting rid of the square, so we square root both sides. And how do we simplify this? Well, I give the number its own radical, and I give the variable its own radical. So rad 12B squared breaks up into rad 12 times rad B squared. Now the square root of 12, we can simplify that. The square root of 12, we break up into two radicals that multiply together to make rad 12, one of which has to be a perfect square. That's going to be rad 4 and rad 3. Over here, the square root of b squared, the square and the square root cancel each other out. We're just left with b. Now, why do we choose 4 over here? Because that's a perfect square. So the square root of 4 is 2, rad 3 stays rad 3, and then b stays b. So when we multiply these together, anything that doesn't have a radical comes out front, and the radical goes at the end. So the height is going to be 2b rad 3 units. So we can put that over here, and we have correctly labeled our figure, so we can find the missing coordinates for points A and B. So the easy one is our origin, point A, that's going to be at 0, 0. Point B, that's the harder one. So the X coordinate for point B, you can see its distance along the X axis from the origin is 2B units. So the X coordinate for point B then must be 2B. The height is just the distance from the x-axis. So how far is point B up from the x-axis? That would be 2B rad 3 units. That's what we just figured out. So the y-coordinate then for point B must be 2B rad 3. And you're done.